Sweden's decision to arm its Gripen fighters with the Taurus Cap 350 is more than a weapons purchase. It is a strategic pivot that extends Stockholm's reach and reshapes deterrence calculus in the Baltic theater. The Taurus brings an ability to strike hardened, high-value targets at standoff ranges measured in the hundreds of kilometers, a capability that changes how an otherwise geographically constrained northern European state can influence an adversary's operational picture. That shift matters because modern conflict is decided less by line-to-line -line attrition than by the ability to hold critical nodes, airfields, logistics hubs, command centers and bridges, at risk from a distance. The counterfactual that frames the debate is not hypothetical. Western crews and standoff weapons have already altered outcomes in recent campaign environments. Systems comparable to Taurus, such as Storm Shadow or Scalp EG, have been used in Ukraine and other operations to prosecute precise strikes against fixed targets demonstrating both the strategic leverage they provide and the operational constraints they expose. Experience from those campaigns shows that the headline effect of a single strike often masks an enduring demand. Sustained access to reliable targeting data, resilient supply chains for munitions, and robust force protection measures for launch platforms and storage sites. In short, missiles alone do not win campaigns. An ecosystem of sensors, logistics, and protection does. Technically, Taurus and Storm Shadow occupy the same doctrinal niche, long-range, high-precision, terrain-masking cruise weapons designed to penetrate hardened defenses. Yet they are distinct in their profiles and operational employment. Taurus emphasizes deep penetration capability with sophisticated guidance suites optimized for complex terrain and hardened targets. Storm Shadow is battle proven, fielded across multiple Western air arms and tested in recent high intensity operations. Metrics like declared range, warhead type and guidance architecture matter in the abstract but operational utility depends on how these weapons are fed with targets and how survivable their carriers are in peer contests. A Taurus on board a Gripen is militarily potent only when the Gripen can reach launch points safely and when downstream effects, follow-on interdiction, exploitation of damage, and escalation management are credible. Ukraine's experience provides a series of actionable lessons relevant to Sweden. First, the employment of standoff strike created disproportionate operational effects when paired with timely, accurate targeting, often provided by a mix of UAVs, signals intelligence, and human reports. Second, attrition of munitions and the logistical burden of sustaining strikes quickly emerged as a limiting factor. The production, transport, and protection of rocket fuel, warheads, and launch vehicles became strategic concerns as much as tactical ones. Third, adversaries adapt. Defensive layers, electronic warfare and counter ISR techniques reduce strike effectiveness over time, so the attacker must be ready to invest in seed dead, stealthy approaches and resilient C2 nodes. For Sweden, the immediate implication is clear. Investing in Taurus should be matched by investments in ISR platforms, distributed basing, and munition sustainment. From a force design perspective, Taurus transforms the Gripen from a tactical multi-role fighter into an element of a strategic strike triad when combined with airborne early warning and persistent ISR. 
Global Eye type platforms, satellite feeds, and maritime surveillance assets become force multipliers, enabling Sweden to nominate, verify, and prosecute targets beyond the literal. But that very transformation generates political and escalation questions. A state that can reach critical infrastructure deep inside an adversary's periphery alters the perceived cost-benefit calculus of both deterrence and coercion. Where previously deterrence was largely positional, it becomes conditional on demonstrable strike credibility. The political corollary is that partner states and NATO allies will watch closely. Integration, deconfliction, and rules of engagement will be decisive in preventing inadvertent escalation. Industrial and supply chain considerations also shape the strategic picture. European partners are increasingly sensitive to where munitions and critical components are produced, and recent moves toward domestic or allied production of propellants and warhead components are as strategically consequential as the missiles themselves. A resilient missile campaign requires more than contracts for delivery. It requires predictable production lines, stockpiles, and political acceptance of peacetime manufacturing on allied soil. Sweden's procurement choices should therefore be seen in tandem with broader European efforts to localize supply chains, reduce single source dependencies, and create mutual aid arrangements for munitions during extended campaigns. Tactically, the integration of Taurus into Sweden's air doctrine will demand changes in training and basing. Strike packages will need suppression of enemy air defenses, dedicated electronic warfare support, and contingency plans for degraded navigation environments. Mobility and dispersal of assets, both aircraft and munition storage, reduce vulnerability to preemptive strikes. Sweden must also prepare for the operational tempo that cruise missiles invite. One or two strikes will have symbolic value, but sustained interdiction requires predictable logistics and a political appetite to accept the strategic consequences. Finally, the ethical and legal dimensions cannot be ignored. Long-range precision strike expands options short of full-scale war, but it raises questions about target selection, proportionality, and escalation management. Transparent signaling, legal frameworks for use, and alliance-level coordination will be crucial to ensure that the capability becomes a deterrent rather than a provocation. Sweden's public and parliamentary debate on procurement should therefore be matched by operational doctrines that constrain misuse while preserving strategic flexibility. In practical terms, the immediate editorial line for a Swedish audience is straightforward. Taurus gives Sweden strategic depth, but depth without the supporting architecture is brittle. The right posture amplifies Taurus's deterrent effect. Invest in ISR and sustainment, harden and disperse logistics, integrate multi-layered air defense to shield launch capabilities, and build alliance mechanisms for combined targeting and escalation control. The long arc of capability development is not the purchase order alone, but the persistent investment in the ecosystem that turns high-end munitions into credible policy instruments. Sweden's choice signals a broader Northern European trend. Small and medium states are moving from reactive defense to proactive deterrence, leveraging precision strike and resilient industry to shape adversary calculations. That change is neither inevitable nor uncontested, but it is consequential. The strategic question for Stockholm will be whether it can match rhetoric with the harder work of logistics, integration and alliance diplomacy, 
For in the era of long-range fires, reach without sustainment is a promise that will be tested the first time conflict calls for more than a single, spectacular strike. 